Morning everybody, welcome back to another CYT Crypto episode. My name is Stephen Aitchison and today we're going over the markets and look at what's happening, look at Bitcoin and look at some of the charts, um, some Binance coins and some news as well. Obviously we'll talk about BAB as well, my decision to leave BAB. I didn't want to make that headline because it's not really a headline at all. I'm only one investor, it doesn't really, it's not going to make much difference, but understand that a lot of people um, kind of pissed off yesterday understandably so we can talk about that as well but um, we'll keep it um, to the main news as well okay I'm just going to see if we're live just make sure we are live we are live we've got a couple of people in which is good to see so just jump over to the chat area just now okay we have Badman in the house good morning to you we have Brundle 25 I'm just going to look at this and um, George Charles is in David Schwartz Marcus Chapadai um, Ross Davison, Crypto Moon Boys, Mark Innes, um, Eddie Holland, Nels Bull, Crypto um, Moon Boys as well, just um, mentioned, Lawrence Matthews, Jason Ray, Alex Jug, and Justin Churchill is in as well. Um, Bab license was, was supposed to be 68 weeks, 6 weeks, end of month, Jason Ray. Yes, indeed. And just before we go on, if you could go down to the like button just now and hit that like button. Um, just now that would be fantastic. It does help the channel. Channel starting to grow a tiny wee bit, but that's cool. Okay, decision to leave Bab. Uh, so I left Bab um, yesterday, and when I say I left Bab, I just mean I got out of it and um, the investment at its all-time low. I have to say, well, not its all-time low, but it's at a very low point at eight satoshi. And you might think that is that's just mental getting out of eight satoshi, and I would say that to anybody else um, as well. But for the last couple of months I've been getting this kind of feeling something's not quite right with Bab and um, I've just been looking at it more and more and thinking should I get out of Bab and I, I wish to go out 11 12 Satoshi and um, then when it would have I would have had three and a half Bitcoin worth um, to get out and play with because I kept on thinking I should get out of Bab and just trade the money and then get back into Bab but something else it's just a feeling, it's just a gut feeling, that's all it is, and I sincerely hope I'm wrong. Um, it was just a gut feeling, and then it just culminated when we got the news yesterday, um, over the last couple of days, got the news that Paul is stepping down, he's going to be uh, in an advisory role. Um, Paul Johnson and Adam has left already. Adam's left apparently in November, which we weren't told about, and I thought it was just really badly handled, a miscommunication from the cut. It wasn't miscommunication even, it was a lack of communication from Bab. And I thought, right, that's it. That's it. This is just at the kind of last straw for me. So I decided to, to get out of Bab and move out at Aid Satoshi. Crazy, crazy, I know. But I thought, okay, I'm going to protect the two and a half Bitcoin I've got and trade with that. If it comes about that Bab do get the license, and I've written to all the companies involved that have applied for licenses, the Bank of England, um, I've written to, I've written to um, Kinesima. Uh, as well for the Cayman Islands license, Lithuanian Bank. I've written to them as well under the Freedom of Information and asked what is the current status of everybody that's applied for a banking license. So I would imagine obviously that will include BAB um, as well. So I just wanted to know the current status of that. So I've done that, awaiting a reply. I spoke to Don Major yesterday from SEMA. She's a paralegal um, over there under Freedom of Information. She said she's going to send over information today. So we'll get that today. And it's not that I don't believe they've applied for the license. I'm just wondering what the status is um, just now. Uh, and it's just a sense that I'm getting. That's all it is, just a sense. And the fact that we weren't communicated with the, the kind of likes of kind of Paul stepping down into an advisory role. And a lot of people are saying, okay, that's that's fine about Paul and Adam kind of moving on. Totally fine, totally understand that and bringing other people in that could do it. But a lot of people are saying kind of Paul has done his bit, he's applied for the licenses. But in that role, you'd apply for the licenses, make sure you got the licenses first before you step down and let somebody else take over. That's where my thinking was. That's not happened. Paul's applied for the licenses, he's kind of put that through, he's kind of made that happen for all the licenses but it's not been seen through. If you'd gone into a role like that and that Paul was in, then you'd see it through, make sure the licenses have come through and then you step down into an advisory role. Not before the licenses have been granted, in my eyes, in my eyes. Adam leaving, apparently left in November. Who knew about that? I, I certainly didn't know about that. It wasn't communicated from um, the company. 
So all of that culminated in something else, a kind of personal thing as well. I just think the way you do the small things is the way you do the big things in business. And I just don't think they've kind of handled it right. Rushdie bringing somebody else in um, to kind of take over Adam's position, totally understand that as well. It looks more than capable. So I genuinely hope that they get the licenses. And I will get back in, but I'm not going to be as vociferous about being in BAP. I won't be a kind of an advocate for them again because I've left. Obviously, this is a kind of big decision for me. Uh, and a lot of people were pissed off. So it would look kind of dodgy if I came back in and started saying, BAP is brilliant again. And I'm not saying they're bad at all. Genuinely, 100% hope they get the licenses and hope they 10x and I hope they can um, get the investors behind them and get the, the money behind them and they really go and they be, become the first genuine bank on the internet as well, um, on the blockchain. Genuine, and I still um, hope everything goes okay and I will jump back in. I'm just not going to tell anybody um, when I do jump back in if they get the license um, because I believe this is what we need. And I believe in the ethos behind it as well and what they're trying to do, bank the unbanked. I just totally believe in them. I just don't, I've lost confidence. That, that's all it is. I've kind of lost confidence in this kind of spidey kind of sense that I've had for the last couple of months, to be honest. I just thought, okay, yesterday was the last kind of straw. I'd asked Paul for an interview. He'd asked me to go to uh, the two Annies um, for an interview. And I'd kind of written to Annie. I said she was in meetings all day. And that's when I decided, okay, um, enough's enough. I've got to protect my own investment here. And I didn't have to tell you. I didn't have to tell you, but I told everybody, I just said, listen, uh, I'm out of BAB because I'd been speaking about BAB so much and a lot of people have came in to BAB because of uh, me speaking about it. So that's why I felt I did have to tell you. So I told you just um, just as I kind of sold as well and just let people know. But it's not made any um, difference to the price. If we go over to kind of KuCoin just now, so it's not made one blind bit of difference. So it's still is sitting at 8, 9 Satoshi. That's where it was yesterday. I sold 31 million at 8 Satoshi. And it did go down slightly to 7, 8 Satoshi, but it's come right back up. You can see all the buys coming in here as well. Um, so if it doubles tomorrow, then I've made a huge mistake. And my spidey sense have been totally off. That's cool. And I really hope that happens. Genuinely hope that happens. Um, but I'm out for the moment. Um, so that was kind of my decision yesterday. Um, obviously pissed a lot of people off saying that wasn't being genuine. That's cool, I can handle that. Um, that's fine, I've got a lot of people into it. So that's that's totally fine. Right, I'm just going to see some of the comments and then we can get on to the main stuff. Um, Chris Noble is in, G-Slick is in, Nullsbill got a bad one December the 25th. Um, a good for you because the price was about 11 12 satoshi back then so that was good antonio good morning jason a holy crap please share the status of these bank as soon as you get i will do as soon as i get any information from the freedom of information people have written to and normally it takes a couple of weeks um, i will share it with you good good and bad obviously um so if it's good obviously i will share it with you and if it's bad i'll just share everything that i get and um, bab team investor tokens for sale towards the end of february that was another thing as well that um, because of Paul and Adam stepping down, if I was in Paul and Adam's position and the kind of release of the kind of tokens came at the end of February, I would sell them. I would sell them. If I was leaving for another company, I needed the money or whatever. Maybe not at this price at Aid Satoshi, but it depends on how much they've got. I don't know how much they've got. Um, still, if it's $10,000, $20,000, I don't know if I would, I'd probably sell them. But that's just a small kind of issue. That's um, just trying to think ahead. Andreas, good morning to you. Scott Greenplay, good morning to you. Imran Chowdhury is in the house. Ajmal Salim, Juan Antonio has to have regards from Spain. I'm scared to look at the VAB charts, but I still trust in the project. Why did Adam leave? No explanation. There's nothing from kind of Adam or the team about that. I would imagine they're going to come out with something um, later on. So we need to kind of wait and see what happens there. Um, but apparently left in November and uh, <laughs> nobody knew about it until yesterday when it kind of came to light on his, I think it was his LinkedIn profile. Um, Scott Greenplay, perhaps a change will do Bab good. It might might be brilliant. This might be a brilliant change for them. I hope it is. Bab needs a CMO, junior marketing. Um, 
Marcus Chifara takes some balls to make the decision to get out. However, the market's right now. There's a lot of profit to be made trading at St. times. There is, and that was my thinking as well. Because I kept on thinking back in December, when it was 12 Satoshi, I thought, okay, shall I get out just now? And get out with three and a half. I'll just see what it was in December. Yeah, it was. So I could have got to say 11 Satoshi. 11 Satoshi, 31 million is probably about 3.1 or 3.4 Bitcoin I think it was so I could have traded with that and using the knowledge that I've got with trading just now and the system we've got in the premium group just now is actually working really well so I know I could have had um, a lot of profit from that and possibly doubled the 3.5 Bitcoin to 7 Bitcoin and then maybe just parked 3.5 um, Bitcoin worth at this price into BAB and maybe get 50 million BAB and just, just leave it there because it was kind of money for nothing if it's trading anyway, and then cheat and then trade with three and a half Bitcoin again. And I might do that again if Bab do get the licenses. If I can double this two and a half Bitcoin that I've got up to five Bitcoin, it might just be that I just go back into Bab at two and a half Bitcoin. I might have to buy it in higher. That's cool. Um, obviously, at the end of the day, we're looking for money. We're looking to make money here, but we also want to kind of invest in companies that we think have got a long term future. So, that was my thinking behind this, the whole um, kind of idea behind BAB is, okay, look at a company that could be for the long term and just hold it for a year. Well, I thought initially it was going to be six months to a year that was going to hold it. And I thought the first license was going to come before the end of 2018. Not that BAB communicated that. They never ever said that. It was just my thinking that that's the kind of time scale I was looking at. And, if the, and once the licenses didn't come, and that's when I started thinking, mm, this is not quite right, There's something not quite right here. So I started doing kind of research and stuff. Um, but the other thing I was going to um, say as well. Ah, oh, shit, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, what I was thinking at the time. So yeah, um, I'll put kind of money back into um, kind of Bab if and when the time is right. So I'm not saying it's a bad company or anything, it's just my particular senses are kind of being alerted just now. And as I said, the price has not made, it's not made one bit of difference to the price. It did for a very short time, but came straight back up. So um, there you go. And that's what's kind of happened there. Alex Joe Paul said he'd hodl. Excellent. And that, obviously, that's a lot of confidence from Paul as well. If you say it's Hoddle, he's got confidence in the team to deliver. Um, Crypto Dread, hey, I missed you yesterday. Let's all have a blessed day. Yeah, I didn't because of KuCoin. I thought my KuCoin had been hacked, my KuCoin account, because um, the 2FA wouldn't work. And I tried everything to get it worked. I ended up, I didn't have anything on the exchange. I ended up just setting up another account. And that was obviously to sell um, Bab as well. Alex, Chuck, your money, your decision, Steve. If others don't like it, it's their problem. Exactly, yeah, but I still feel because I've got a lot of people um, into and I've been speaking about it so much and a lot of people call me a hypocrite. But things change, relationships change. It's just like uh, having a relationship with people. You're having a relationship with people and that's what it's like and relationships change. So um, some are too emotionally invested, I think. Yeah, I was kind of emotionally invested in Bab as well and you shouldn't be, totally shouldn't be. And that's because I kept on thinking for a few months that I'm too emotionally involved in it and I should just see it as a money kind of business transaction. That's what it is. And yesterday was, it was just like, okay, this is business. This is my kind of personal business. I'm going to get out. Um, I can't be loyal to somebody just for the sake of being loyal. Um, so, but there's just a lot of kind of things that came together for that decision to be made. Um, you can have nice charts with team support then, but realistically, nothing personal, but your first priority is to make money and not a loss. That's the difference between those who make money and not. That was the thing I was going to say. So back in, I remember having a conversation with Paul on Telegram and saying, listen, I've got £120,000 or $120,000 invested in BAB at the moment. What do you think? And I can't remember if I've got that conversation or not. I'm not going to kind of show it. But I'm just going to look for it just now and just see if that's there. Because uh, I can't remember exactly what was said. Uh, right.
Now, this was for the interview back in April. Right, so on April 30th, uh, I had questions back in April 30th. Uh, just to ask Paul a quick question to help me understand the crowd sale. This was about the crowd sale. I've got $100,000 invested in BAB at the moment. Um, so it wasn't 120, it was 100,000. So back in April, it was I had $100,000 worth of BAB, more than that actually. Why wouldn't I sell at this price just now? Take part in the crowd sale and receive the equivalent back in backs, plus all the bonuses. Am I missing something? I don't want to ask in the main group as an ambassador of BAB. So that was a question I had um, kind of back then about the kind of crowd sale. That was a private equity crowd sale. And from there on in, I started thinking that maybe I should sell. And that was when it was 100,000. It's gone down to eight and a half thousand now. Um, so I have to protect what I've got. So that's what I was going to say. So that was a, a wee reminder there as well. And that was crazy on my part because my thinking was at the time, just hodl. Not the right thing to do when you've, there's so many opportunities for trading just now. Just not the right thing to do. I'll go back to this. I just left that on there. Um, what we've got... Christopher A, thanks up front for the sentiment and update on Bab. Imran, um, good morning all. James, Oklahoma, one of our brown admins as well. Uh, got to say another kind of big shout out to all the admins and the team as well. I know we're kind of we're kind of like ships in the night just now in the admin team, but that will come back together hopefully um, soon as well. But um, the admin team have just been doing brilliant um, just now. So big shout out to you and James, Oklahoma is one of them. And um, what do you want? What do you know about DAC? Steve, don't know anything. Jeez, like, I only had 100k bab, might sell them off. LOL. Aloysius, if you've only got 100k, that's not a huge amount. Um, as it might be worth, kind of, I'd say it would be worth keeping in. Aloysius, I'm selling bab and pundi X and buying more VET. VT, I was thinking VT also for the long term. Jeez, like, okay, so we'll look at the markets. Enough about my kind of stuff. Nobody wants to hear about that. Okay, market capitalization, 120 billion, up 1.28%. Bitcoin dominance, 52.33%. Over the last 24 hours, we've got Bitcoin up 1.07%. We'll just have a look at Bitcoin just now. 3574. Precarious just now, it's still just under 3600. If it can get over 3600, I feel we're going to go up. But <laughs> we've been there before, and it did. We can see here back... Oh, on the 17th of January, we got over 3,600. It went up to 3,774 before doing a Bart Simpson, coming right down again. And we're in the same scenario here again. So it looks as if it wants to go above 3,600, but it's a major resistance level. Um, but we've also got a major support level, about 3,500 as well. So who knows what's going to happen um, with, with Bitcoin. If it breaks below 3,480, 3, if it breaks below that, then we're kind of scuppered. We're going down to 3,300. If it breaks above 3,600, um, we're going up to the next kind of support level or resistance level, which is probably going to be about 3,700 now. So we're in this $100 channel just now, uh, and that's the situation we are in at the moment. Um, and this has just been for the last few days, obviously, we're in this channel. So, but we're at the top end of the channel. Hopefully, we can break through that 3,600. Okay, we'll see who the, the big winners are. Waves. Um, kind of called out the other day. And I did get out of Waves um, because of the long-term um, kind of airdrop they were kind of talking about. But I did say at the time, stay, it might be worth staying in it because we've got good news coming out for the end of January. They've gone up 24% over the last 24 hours. Brilliant. So I'm really glad. Um, I know a few people in the premium group kind of got into that as well. Ravencoin is up 19%. Redcoin, Futuracoin, 12%. Stratus, Bytum, Theta, up. And um, we'll just look at over 100k as usual and see who the winners are there as well. That's the volume over 100k. And we'll go to all. Ah, that's not done. I 
can be that the waves was the top one. I don't quite believe that. Hmm. As a view. Yeah, I didn't think that was correct. And we'll go to over 100k now. No, it's still not working. Ah, there we go. So Luna is up 80%. And this is what I'm talking about, the kind of trading as well. On Binance, there's been about five coins over the last kind of couple of weeks or, or more, more than that, on just on Binance alone. They've doubled in price. Luna, um, kind of one of them, been one of them. We've had IOST, we've had Z um, Zilliqa, um, we've had loads of coins that are doubling in price. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen if we look at uh, kind of Binance just now. You can see Luna there from its low there, 3,705. 161% from its kind of low, and that was only a couple, we're talking a couple of weeks ago um, from there. So I think that's going to happen more and more um, with Binance. Waves is obviously starting to go up as well again. So there's a lot of projects that have kind of doubled uh, in price. Uh, that's my thinking with kind of investing in some of these kind of Binance tokens as well and just trading. Remember, we've only got 151 tokens on Binance. So chances are, if we're putting money in to some of them and looking at what's happening, how can we see, can we predict what ones are going to double? We can't predict what ones are going to double, but we can kind of see when they're going to go up relatively easily. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about, the kind of system I've got in the premium group just now. It's relatively easy to get into a project and not see it double, but go up by at least 5-10%. So we'll just see that on here and see what's been doing. Well, obviously, learn. And see quite clearly, this is on the one-hour chart. Even on the one-hour chart, if you just look to the crossover on the one-hour chart, you'd have been up 115% just using the crossover. That's it. Simple trading. Simple trading. You don't need, I don't think you need TA or lots of TA or a vast knowledge of TA. A crossover trade, I think, would work perfect. Wabi is starting to go up as well. Crossed over there. Gone up 17%. And this is on the hourly chart as well. If you just went on the hourly, crossed over here, went up 67%. Now, when you're doing, when you're trading this way, it's um, the thing about it is when to get out, when do you get out? Then, the, the thing with that, we've been asked a couple of times this, the thing to do when you're looking to get out, um, what be, there's, a, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can wait and it going up. If it goes up 20%, push your stop limit up to 10% of where it is at the moment. So if it comes back down 10%, you're still up 10%. But just keep pushing the stop limit up. And with the likes of three commas, for example, I've not used it myself with the likes of three commas, you can actually set a, a trailing stop loss. So you could set your trailing stop loss for 10%. So if it goes up 150%, you'll catch it all. And if it comes down another 10% from that 150% rise, then that's when it'll get stopped out and that's when you'll come out of the market automatically. So I think more and more, that's what we need. We need that in Binance. We need a trailing stop loss. I've not got that um, yet, but with the likes of three commas, I've not used it because I'm reluctant to get my API kind of details over um, for trading. But if you're trading with a small amount, I think it could um, definitely be worth it. So just using a simple trading technique, like the crossover, could be really lucrative for you. Now, obviously at the other end, we're looking at this. See, that actually crossed over here, so <laughs> I just scuffled my um, kind of argument here. I was going to say, on the other end, um, you might just get kind of stopped out straight away. Usually when you first go into a trade, put a stop loss of 5% on it. Just 5%, so you're only ever going to lose um, kind of 5%. So if you've got 20 trades, um, then then you're out of the game. If you've got $1,000, you've got 20 trades, and you're losing 20 trades. But that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. It's not, you're not going to be that unlucky that you're going to lose on 20 trades just using the crossover technique um, or crossover trading strategy. So this crossed over here. This is just on the hourly as well. It's much more...
it's much more stable when you do it on a four hour light and uh, kind of daily. So on a four hour light crossed over, you're still being up 173%. This is loop ring. On a daily, when it crossed over, crossed over here, you're still being up 160%. So I like TA really simple and just what we're doing just now in the kind of premium group and the calls we're making, this is this is really what we're we're kind of doing as well. And um, you're getting the calls every day, but in the premium group obviously you're getting the chat and you're getting the people getting to know the people as well. It's all about community and um, within there as well. So that's why I feel with two and a half Bitcoin I could trade um, my way up with that as well. Can not good news coming out soon as the market turns around. Hopefully it's going to turn around. Digitex looks like a great short-term investment in 0.32, but if I buy, they probably going down further and won't recover for months. LOL, Aloysius. We'll just look at a few of the small ones that we've been looking at. Hopefully Coin Signals is working okay. So how we do is down to 306. It's fine, not... Um, too worried about that at all, but it's down to 306 just now. We've got DGTX. That's down to 915 um, just now. So we're just waiting on the exchange coming out for that. And um, Bab, obviously, we know kind of about Bab as well. That's 89 Satoshi. So it's kind of fell below this um, trading channel. But I've no doubt it'll come back in again. Um, we've got Metamorph, Metamorph's been doing over, doing well, but it's come back down a wee bit. So it's 109 just now. So this is the thing about getting into small ones like Metamorph. If you'd kind of got um, in when it was down below, say about 60, you could have went up 100%, sold, kind of, and got back in just now and just keep trading it up. Um, and these charts and these kind of crossovers still pertain to the small ones as well. And um, Blockport is doing well. Blockport is one I recommended uh, for the long term. That's doing really well just now. So hopefully um, some of you gone to Blockport as well. That's gone up 200%. So I released an ebook um, and said this is one for the long term and it's starting to move just now. It's doing really well at the moment. I still think it's got legs. Gino Dahl is in the house. Welcome to you. Hi, Steve. You're attending Blockchain Expo at Olympia, 26th of April. No, I've not got any plans to. I've not got any plans to, but I'm going to, I'm going to go to a few conferences, I think. Um, so I'll look into that, Brundle. Um, Imran, Redcoin. Not, don't know too much about that. Redcoin Tesla here maybe doing a project, but not confirmed yet. Uh, we'll just do... Right there, sitting just now. From its all-time high, they're looking at 81% just in line with the market as well. So I don't know too much about Redcoin at all. I did trade them for a while, but I didn't. I don't know too much about the actual company. Um, Goran, what are they used EMEs? Um, that we tell in a premium group. Um, we kind of show you all that in a premium group as well, Goran. Just like RDD, IoT Financial, High Steve Blockport is having a great run up. It is. It's having a really good run up. And I'm really pleased with that. Um, Imran, oh, I wasn't asking about Redcoin. Uh, that was like a surprise point from the previous statement regarding Redcoin and Tesla. Ah, right, okay. It was just okay. Imran, um, Christopher A, we're in a classic um, capitulation. This is like being a battleground where you see losses all around you. But if you keep your head down, sit tight, make it through. Yeah, I think so, Christopher A. There seems to be so much war and despair in crypto these days. Could this be an indication that they were all nearing the bottom of the bear market? My point is maybe things are not all that bad. Yeah, I do think that as well. I do think we're getting to the stage of kind of capitulation. We might have even reached that stage already, you don't know. Um, but a lot of people are just going, Phew. what's the point? What's the point? and um, just now um, and getting out of it and that's the stage where you should be kind of getting into it and I, I think a lot of the institution will be kind of looking at that because they'll know the psychology of the market they've had years and years of kind of looking at the market and knowing about the psychology of stock markets and the FX markets and stuff like that as well they know the psychology of it so they'll know um, kind of capitulation points as well and they'll know exactly when to get in so I think we're close to the bottom I do think we're close to the bottom, um, but it's crypto. 
as crypto always kind of surprises you. Okay, we'll look at some of the kind of headlines I'd kind of spoke about. Um, this was, I will go to that first. So this is the kind of news. I've kind of seen a trailer for this. And this is kind of tongue in cheek as well. But this is crypto as a TV show. Could this um, make it mainstream? So Hollywood actor Kevin Connolly directs new television pilot Cryptos and the North American Bitcoin Conference in Miami had a surprise visit last Thursday when Kevin Connolly, the actor from HBO series Entourage, announced a new television show called Cryptos is under development. Connolly hopes the new show will bring it will help the public better understand the innovative cryptocurrency ecosystem. Go on with the trailer, I don't think it will. Um, if you've seen it, I'm just going to play it for you just now. Um, one wee second. So I don't think that is going to bring it to the mainstream. I think it's um, aimed at a certain audience and I think it'll do really well. Now I'll just turn that off actually. Um, yeah, so <laughs> as I say, I don't think that's going to bring it to the mainstream, but it will make more people aware of it and that's that's that can only be a good thing. Um, James Gibbons, um, one of our brown admins as well. Steve, your announcement yesterday would point towards capitulation. Capitulation, what is capitulation then? So uh, this is when even the bulls, i.e. me, um, would be getting out of the market, i.e. Bab, and getting out of Bab, and kind of looking at it uh, from that point of view. Could well be. Hopefully it is. Um, hopefully it is. So it could be um, kind of that for that particular, for Bab, it could be a um, capitulation point for Bab, and this is the lowest it'll ever go, and probably will be. And um, we'll see. So it could be, but I'm not getting out of the market as a whole. I'm wanting to trade more. I don't really want to trade more with the two and a half bit or 2.4 Bitcoin, 2.45 Bitcoin it is. Um, so I'm wanting to trade more because I think there's loads of opportunities, particularly with them, um, kind of just looking at Binance alone. There's loads of opportunities still in the market. I'll just see a couple, of, yeah. The, the likes of Luna, um, for example, the likes of Waves. We've got kind of a lot of them. A lot of them are going to double in price, and I think this is where the kind of low Satoshi value coins is just going to double in price. Um, see a coin, we've kind of described, um, I've kind of called that already. See a coin, that's on the point of breaking out, I think, um, as well. Do your own research, but I've called that already um, for see a coin in the premium group. And um, likes of NCash, it's not broken out yet. Dent is not really broken out. Hot has already broken out, that's went up 50% from, well, it went up more than that actually. From 13 and um, where did talk go so it was about 13 kind of called it so it went up nearly 100% so a lot of the tokens are going to go up 100% I think the low Satoshi value ones are definitely going to um, kind of go with that as well but obviously you've got the good projects as well because everybody's at a low just now all the projects and um, kind of Binance and all the other exchanges are at low points so that they're near their all-time lows so this is where it's brilliant to kind of trade because you're going to get that 100% 200% gain as well. Um, Nasdaq CEO, crypto could still be a global currency of the future. So um, one of the most positive trends with regards to cryptocurrency recently is the fact that more high profile individuals in the finance world seem to have no problem acknowledging that there's massive potential in the sector. And this is the same with um, Adina Friedman as well. She said that this could actually be um, the future. We just don't know. So she's got two scenarios though. So she's got one, either the innovation finds practical utility followed by years of steady and sustainable commercial progress and integration into the economic fabric, e.g. the internet. 
um, or the invention fails to achieve broad adoption and its commercial applications as medium of exchange are limited, e.g. the segue. So she's kind of talking about it from two points of view there. So it's not all good, but it's not bad um, either as well. And this was our kind of tweet as well. Um, so she said, Friedman said, it's difficult to ignore the huge amount the investors, including some of the most sophisticated global investors, have poured into digital currencies in recent years. And I think that's a, a fair point um, to make as well. Some of the brightest minds in investment are into um, kind of cryptocurrencies as well, or digital currencies as she calls it. And that was the Hollywood um, kind of TV cryptos. Bitcoin price watch, the um, BTC price runs, in, price runs into crucial resistance. What's next? So the technical indicators, that this is from newsbtc.com. Um, so they said, yesterday we discussed the chance of more losses below the 3,500 level in Bitcoin price against the US dollar. The BTC USD pair did decline below 3,500 and 3,480 support levels. The pair spiked towards 3,450 level and later bounced back. Um, so buyers were successful in pushing the price back above 3,480 and 3,500. So it could be considered as a false break since there was no hourly close below 3,480. Um, so the recent recovery was sold above 3,550 and 50% FIB retracement level of the downside move from the 3,700 swing high to 3,465. So they're saying major support level 3,500 just like we've said as well, major resistance level 3,600. Do you know where it's going to go? Um, doesn't, we're just at a kind of crucial point as I said here. Um, looking at the chart, Bitcoin price seems to be trading near a crucial juncture of 3,600. There are high chances of more gains, but it won't be easy for buyers to clear the 3,600 level. And that's certainly the case at the moment. Once that does clear, if it does clear, then it should be easier um, to get above, um, to get to the next level um, for that as well. That's on a daily. Just go back to the four hourly. So at 3,569 just now, so I need to kind of wait and see what happens here. This was interesting, BitHum. Um, crypto exchange BitHum um, seeks US listing via reverse merger deal. So BitHum, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges by trading volume, is looking to go public in the US through a reverse merger route. So blockchain industry is an investment firm focused on the crypto and blockchain industry and traded on the US um, over-the-counter markets. Announced Tuesday that it signed a binding letter of intent um, agreement with Singapore-based um, BitHum Holdings or BTHMB Holdings and the holding company of BitHum for the reverse merger deal. So that'll be interesting to see these kind of companies going and doing a kind of an IPO, um, kind of almost. Other news we're just going, and that's kind of news I was kind of looking at. This is um, plus one for crypto. Mastercard fined 650 million for inflating fees. This was just the kind of news that Mastercard um, has been fined for inflating the kind of prices of it and why it could be good for the likes of um, kind of blockchain companies that are using kind of cards as well, you know, like 10x um, as well. Obviously, BAB as well could be including that as well. Um, MCO would be including that as well. Um, so, because they obviously don't inflate the prices. So, they're saying this, is, this could be good news, but I don't like to see kind of bad news um, to make it look like the blockchain is going to be good um, for the likes of this. But it could be. That's just a fact. We kind of all knew that anyway. Um, crypto exchange asks users to return 5.3 million in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins after accidental airdrop. So Coinzest is trying to recover cryptocurrencies worth 5.3 million that are accidentally airdropped. And this, see, they can't get that back in um, kind of any other system. They'd be able to claw back if it was a banking system. They'd just be able to take the money back out. But they can't because this is, um, the kind of blockchain is non-reversible. So you can't go back in and take money out that you've given to somebody already. They have to send it back to you. So they're trying to um, get that back. And this is a good thing. Uh, I thought this kind of highlighted um, how good and secure the system was as well. But obviously there's downsides to that. Right, one wee second.
sorry about that. Okay, we'll just go to the chat area just now. This thing's kind of happening at home just now. Um, right. What is the cost of the premium group? It's $37 a month, or you can pay in kind of Bitcoin as well. And we'll just work out the price. So you can pay for six months or a year if you want to pay via cryptocurrencies. So we can do on a monthly basis just now. I don't think any company has that at the moment, whereby you can just send crypto every single month. Um, but um, you can do it, pay for it in crypto as well, Ross. Um, Tron Airdrop, Gino Dow. Uh, this is with BTT you're talking about. Anyway, and see what happens with that. Imran Chowdhury kind of looks like Roger Ver and Jimmy Sun are going to make a cameo or something. Perhaps have Tone Vase as a villain. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. There's another series called, uh, another crypto series called Startup, which is pretty good. It has three seasons worth checking out. Is that purely about crypto though? I've never actually seen it. I've heard people kind of talking about it, but I thought that it was just like they kind of started talking about cryptocurrency and stuff. I didn't know if it was exclusively about um, kind of crypto. Um, Tim Land, hey Steve, you need to check out XYO. I think we've checked that out before. James Gibbons, more smart trades is my approach. Got a TRX long and currently see lots of value in TRX still to come. Yeah, so do I. Um, I still see a lot of value in that. We called that the other day. That was a call of the day. It's 708 Satoshi. It's gone up, went up to about 760. We'll just see what it is just now. TRX, 731 just now. It's kind of went up about 5% already since it was called. But uh, look at the crossover. Again, this is another one um, that's kind of doubled in price. So it's kind of gone up. It's went up 150%. So I do still see some long-term potential for that and short-term potential for it as well. And when I say short-term, I'm talking seven days, within seven days. Cardano will start to ramp up soon. Yeah, I, I was going to park. Um, the kind of money I'd taken out of Bab, I was going to park it in Cardano just now until I wait to see what Bab, um, what was happening with Bab. But I'm not. I'm going to trade the two and a half Bitcoin and then hopefully just um, put money into Bab as well for the long term. So I've got long term in kind of XRP. I'm trading with another kind of five tokens and with the two and a half Bitcoin, I'm just going to trade the way I've kind of been teaching um, and see what happens. Cardano, um, check out XYO. Yeah, I will check that out again. I've never checked it for a while, but we did. I'm sure we checked it out at some point. Superior Engineering will start to overtake intermediate projects that claim to do a lot, but will expose is just hype. Whereas projects like Cardano will prove the tech in the real sense. Yeah, Cardano, I keep, keep we've well, been speaking about it since kind of eight, nine hundred Satoshi. Uh, I just think it's going to double, then double again, then double again. It's just going to go up and up and up and up. Over 2019, I think it's going to be a brilliant year for Cardano in 2019. And I think it's going to be one of the ones, one of the stars of 2019. Um, morning, Steve. Um, hi, all. Snow in Dover. We've got snow here as well. Not that much in Scotland. Not that much, but we've got snow as well. Uh, that's funny. My mate from London was showing me pics of snow while I showed him pics of sunny afternoon in California. <laughs> yeah, we have, we definitely have snow here as well. Just a wee bit. Imran, hey Steve, have you seen the new Mu beta? Um, user interface looks so much better and user friendly. I've not seen it yet. Uh, I've never used Mu for a while, actually. I haven't used it for a while, so check that out. Crypto Don Juan is in. Beam is up 48% since I mentioned it yesterday. Excellent. Excellent. I didn't check that out, Crypto uh, Don Juan. Gina Dow can go up a little bit. Ada will be a star for sure this year. Alta Patel, I think so. I think um, Cardano is going to be a star this year. Message before Tron airdrops. Right, what does that mean, Gino? Okay, I think we'll leave it there. There was other news I was going to kind of share with you very, very quickly. And uh, this is from Charlie Shrem. Bitcoin will be a lone survivor in nuclear war. V chain waves and Zilliqa gaining momentum as a reach for double digit increase. Um, so that was all good news for them. Bitcoin creator never been affiliated with them. Um, this was um, from AMB Crypto. As uh, the Bitcoin creator says, he's never been affiliated with Tron or Justin Sun or about his new company as well. And Justin Sun's nothing to do with it. So I thought that was quite interesting as well. There's a couple of things came out about that. So he said, I'm no longer in any way affiliated with Bitcoin and have never been affiliated with Tron or Justin Sun. I don't know if he's saying it in a bad way or a good way. Um, Chris Burnisk, Bon uh, partner, a placeholder, said on Twitter 
Tron Foundation TRX is pumping because it will allow people to claim BitTorrent coin. Though per tweets like Brams and other whispers, Tron is just shilling BitTorrent's brand, while talent bleeds and workability of BTT is an afterthought. Um, so we've got to look at two sides of the kind of crypto market. So while I think Tron is going to do really, really well, I think we've got to look at the kind of two sides of it. So that was a kind of news story that was out, and I'll post that in the comments as well. Anthos and Zilliqa, yeah, I think Zilliqa is going to do well. I think they are going to do well. Tony Don Matthew, morning Steve, I exited my position in BAB back in December, but now what happens to a castle party? Because it was on BAB hitting big numbers. It was on BAB hitting big numbers. Um, and it could still well be. We'll just not call it the BAB castle party. We'll just call it someday in the premium group. Say so we'll just call it the CYT castle party or CYT millionaires castle party. I think that was Jim that kind of said that. Um, or somebody else. I do apologise if it wasn't Jim. So yeah, we'll just say it's a CYT castle party. Um, so that'll be good. Hi Steve, what do you think about Grin? I didn't look into it. I heard the, kind of, all the kind of hullabaloo about Grin, but I didn't actually look into it. Paul Wilson, can you be added to Binance and Ledger Nano soon? That would be excellent. Is that Ken News? So where is Ken just now actually? We've never looked at Ken for a while. And that was one for the long term. Ken Bitcoin. I need its all time low, so it could be a really good time to, well, it's one Satoshi would be not looking at Ken Ethereum. Kenneth. So it's all time low, it was 9 Gui or Gui or Gui, or however you pronounce it. And it's at 26. Just now it has been as high as 145. So if that is kind of rumours that is going to be added to Binance and Ledger soon, that'll be very that be brilliant for them. Paul Wilson saying news so was, yeah, I kinda of got that. Turned <laughs> out if you if you have hundred K TRX you get hundred K BTD coin. Twelfth the question is do you still re, um, re receive BTD coin for TRX holders every month? I don't think it's gonna quite work like that. So I think the way it's gonna work is they're gonna tranche it over a period of I think it's about seven years. Um, so what they're going to do, if you hold Tron, they're going to give you money at the beginning after the 12th of February or something, or the 11th of February. But I don't think it's going to be on a one-to-one. -one. So if you've got 100k Tron um, at the time, I don't think they're going to give you 100k BTT. I think it's going to be spread over a period of how many, however many years. I don't know. I don't know. Because if that was the case, if they were going to kind of release it every month or something, or they're going to release it every three months, it would just be the Tron would go up and down because they're going to get these BTT tokens. So I don't think they're going to play it like that. So I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. Um, Altaf made a good gain in FTO yesterday. Excellent. What do you think about Ken? Would be worth um, in, say, three to four years. Or oh, honestly, don't know. I want to get to about a million and just forget about it and see. Aloysius. Yeah, I think if you're willing to wait four or five years, I think it, Ken could be really, really big. It could be really big, and I think it could surprise everybody. But I've been saying that for the last year as well. Danny Ogilvy is in the house. Good morning to you. Good to see you, buddy. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there for the moment. Uh, unless there's any questions, we can just go on and just do another 14, 15 minutes if you want any kind of questions or look at charts or whatever. And just have a look at um, kind of BTC. 3,568 just now. Luna is starting to come back down, obviously. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Waves has still gone up, which is excellent. The cold waves at 71,000. It's going to 24%. So that's good. That's going to look good for the calls list as well. And I'm glad some people stayed in that in the premium group. Um, a lot of people stayed in Waves and I said I was coming out of the trade but I still thought Waves would do well and they have they have done well but I don't know if they've actually kind of released anything so we'll just go into Twitter and see if they've got this announcement that they're kind of talking about go to Waves platform it's not Keep it update is out. What's new in version 1.07? So this is a kind of keep it update. 
we'll go to Sasha's um, kind of tweets. Basically, these are coming out first. Dab was one year ago. Let's see how this is in a year. 21 hours. And 24 conferences. So there's no real news out. Good point. We still have to work on Bitcoin a little. Hmm. So there's still no news of um, kind of this big announcement they're going to make. So it could go up even more um, as well. Could go. Could do. Where's the next resistance for waves? If we look at their kind of resistance levels and see where it could potentially go. So we're talking really resistance round about um, kind of ten thousand or one hundred and two thousand, possible one hundred and twenty thousand. So we could get to its all-time high. Wabi as well gone up since the crossover. Doc, see a lot of these. This is on the daily chart, and this is when you think um, the Bitcoin could be going up as well because the underlying um, or the alts are starting to kind of really cross over on the daily chart as well. There's a lot crossing over on the daily. And this is what happened kind of back in April as well. Nano is just crossing over as well, that's doing well. A theta token that could spike up as well. If you look at the previous spikes as well, where it was before that shows you the potential of what could happen from here. So theta token could double from here as well. Let's go down to the bottom ones. LRC, that's already gone up and coming down. Same as 0AX. 0AX is another one that kind of doubled as well. So that went up within a couple of days, 150%. That was another one that doubled. Link as well, or a chain link. How's that done? So that's really since August. But even since December, kind of went up 123%. REP, 166%. This is why I think it's good trading. I still think, and just trading on one exchange like Binance because you're just focused on one exchange, you get to know the coins better. And I think even if you just focus on one particular coin like Tron, for example, you could have traded that so much and still got a lot out of it. If you just focus on one coin, you get to know its little nuances and stuff like that as well when you're trading. BQX, how much has that gone up? That crossed over 169%. So is kind of what I'm talking about here. There's a lot that are just gone up by 100%, 344% for DLT. Kind of coming back down again. Zilliqa, 43% just now. Excess, VT, still think VT is going to jump and pops in. So this is just on Binance alone. If that's all you've done and just focus your trading on Binance alone, I think you could make a lot. Paul Wilson, LOL, just got here. <laughs> Excellent. Have you looked at RepMe? I haven't looked at RepMe. Check TKY, it's so cheap. Uh, Gary Parment, I think we checked that the last a couple of weeks ago. And um, TKY, I don't know, Matthew, there's so much of a shake up in the market. Long term hold of anything other than the top coins seem very risky. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree with that. I tend to agree with that, Donnie. Um, that was my thinking when I first got into crypto. Hold. Hodl everything. It's all going to go up. Hodl everything. But I don't think that's the way. Um, apart from now, now that the market is so low, now I think looking at the top coin, especially like Bitcoin, if you just look at the top coins, that's all you did and focus on the top coin and just say, okay, this is the ones I'm going to hold. Um, then you would say, look at Bitcoin, XRP. I'm not sure about Ethereum still. I still think it could be good for the long term. I think it could be good. Um, Ethereum, so you'd hold that as well. Bitcoin Cash, definitely not. EOS, yep, I would. Stellar, I would. Litecoin, I would. Tron, I would. And Tron's riskier, but I still would hold it. Bitcoin SV, definitely not. Cardano, yes, I would. Definitely. That's a big yes. IOTA, yes. Binance Coin, definitely. As well. Neo, definitely. Nem, definitely. Dash, I'm not so sure about. Monero, I don't know if it's. I'm not so sure about that either. Ethereum Classic, now, I would. As well, so even the top 20 coins, you could just say, okay, 
just accumulate them and just hold them for the future. Um, because they, they might go lower than they are just now, but they're not going to go that much lower. And you've got there's less risk in the top 20 coins. There's still risk. It could be that Ethereum just disappears. It could be that Ripple just gets wiped out as well. But there's, there's definitely less risk uh, for the top 20 ones. Um, but if you're looking to make huge gains, obviously, you go for the hidden gems as well. And we, I thought Bab was a hidden gem, um, to be honest. But for me, it's not just now. And it's, um, hopefully we can get back into that and it becomes the hidden gem that I thought it was. I'm looking at expat a bit nation on Banker. Could be a nice little punt for the price. What do you think? Yeah, I used to do a lot of trading on Banker. There was a nice little trading kind of system we had going as well on Banker, where the coins were doubling, would get out and then go back in again. It was just it was quite good. Lawrence Matthews, Kin Kick, and the CEO absolutely hate Facebook. He always uses Facebook as an example of what they don't want to be and want to surpass. I think Kin could be really good. Um, AI is the next frontier for crypto. Elon Musk keeps referring to um, democratized artificial intelligence. Uh, you can't democratize something you can't control. Gino Dow, USA are doing sanction against Russia. Russia are going to buy BTC in February, as we mentioned, as was mentioned in Australian news. I think that was just a rumor that they were going to do that. However, I think it would be a smart move if they did do that. I really think it would be a smart move. Musk is actually afraid of AI. Crypto Dread, thanks man. 420 here in Florida. I'm about to tap it. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate Crypto Dread. I'm just about to go myself. Donny Don, going to TRX after hearing your call of the day. Do you think Waves has more room to grow? I do think it has more room to grow. And um, depending on the news. So there's obviously something coming out. So it really depends on the news and obviously Bitcoin. Always check your Bitcoin price as well. It's still going up. So I do think it could reach past the $120,000 mark. And it could be one of those coins that says okay we're up 100 percent but we have to remember it's jumped already it's jumped already 317 percent it's kind of retraced to where it is just now only 26 percent but did retrace to here which is when i called it around about 71,000, 72,000. i thought okay this is going to bounce back up and it has done exactly that as well yeah so i think um trx tron okay we'll just have a look at the trx charts See what's happening with that. Turn Bitcoin and Binance. It's difficult. It's difficult. I still think. I still think Tron is going to go up. I still think Tron is going to go up from here. And look, I called it 708. I think it's 708. It's not even kind of 5%, is it? Yeah, about 6%. It did go up to seven when I was 7.51. That's about 3.5% just now. But it did go up um, kind of before that as well. But if you look at the 7, um, if you look at the kind of EMA line here, the 7 EMA here is kind of bouncing off that. It's going down to that and kind of bouncing off, down to it, bouncing off. You can see here all the way up as well. So I'll keep an eye on that um, as well. But I think with the BTT, when that's coming out, just have a look at that as well. This is Bitcoin Launchpad, a uh, Binance Launchpad. Oh, assessment sign in. That's oh, not going to let me look at it. Um, but yeah, that's the bit on. I think that could be bigger than people think. Um, to be honest, but I don't, even, I don't think I'm going to invest in it. I don't think we're going to see it. could be a short-term thing. But I do think Tron are going to go up, so it's difficult to say. Um, are we still bullish on Metamorph? Yes. For the kind of longer term, I'm still bullish on Metamorph, purely because the market cap is so low on Metamorph just now. Uh, and what they're thinking about doing or what they're doing just now as well. They're still working away in the background. So I still think long-term it could be okay. Uh, if you hold Tron and your Nanos, will you still get the airdrop? Um, you should still get the airdrop, um, but you'd need to check that out, Mitch, but you should still get it. Gary Permenta, I've given so many hints. Huh? Right, what's this for? AI is an extra frontier for crypto. Elon Musk. Right, you've given so many hints, right? Right, so this is TKY, okay. 
Um, I got you, Gary. I've got you. Except a dread match, we'll get TRX here dropping a nano. Tron looks like it's in resistance. Um, Gary Permento, last tint. If you're not married, you are. If you're not married, you are. Aloysius, enjoy your day, everyone. Okay, I'm going to leave you there just now. Have a brilliant day, whatever you're doing. Um, until next time, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes.